What do you call this? Well, in America, you'd call it a fanny pack, but to us Brits, that does sound a little offensive since fanny doesn't, well, it doesn't refer to your butt. In Britain, we would call this a bum bag, but either way, wearing it is a little embarrassing. I'm Siobhan Thompson, and this is Anglophenia. Now, Brits and Americans dress pretty similarly, but what we call our clothes differs quite a bit. So, we here at Anglophenia feel like it's our civic duty to educate both cultures on how to properly refer to certain articles of clothing. Pants versus trousers. In the US, these are called pants. In the UK, they're called trousers because when we Brits think of pants, we think of these, what Americans would call underwear. This led Brits to mistakenly believe that the sisterhood of the traveling pants was a very different kind of movie. Pants is also a very soft swear word in the UK. It's what people on TV say when they want to say shit, but they know that if they do say shit, the editors will put a nice long beep noise over the top of it, so if they say pants instead. Trainers versus sneakers. In the UK, these are called trainers. They're called that for pretty obvious reasons. They're used for training. In the US, they're called sneakers. They got their name after shoes with rubber soles were invented in the 19th century. Their quiet rubber bottoms were perfect for schoolboys who wanted to sneak around. Some Americans also refer to these as tennis shoes. This came from a time when athletic shoes were a luxury item. Only the wealthy had the leisure time necessary for recreational sports. They would wear plimsolls while they played tennis, and the sport eventually became associated not just with plimsolls, but with all rubber soled shoes. I guess there are worse rich person sports for the shoes to be associated with. I mean, they could be called croquet shoes. Fancy dress party versus costume party. Okay, so if you're an American living in the UK and you're invited to a fancy dress party, you're probably going to show up in a tuxedo or a formal gown. Now, when you show up to this party and see a bunch of zombies and vampires, don't run away screaming. It's just Brits dressed up for what Americans would call a costume party. So they're not going to eat your brains or suck your blood. At least I, I don't think they will. Swimming costume versus bathing suit. Now, because Americans normally associate the word costume with a type of silly dress, it's doubly confusing to them when Brits talk about a swimming costume. To an American, that sounds like somebody in a sexy cat outfit doing laps. And Brits are just as confused when Americans talk about bathing suits. The picture that comes to mind is somebody wearing a tuxedo having a bath. Jumper versus sweater. In the UK, we call this a jumper. Nobody's quite sure of the origin of the word, although it may come from the French word jupe, meaning skirt, which is derived from the Arabic word juba, which means a loose outer garment. In the late 1800s, Americans started to refer to this type of garment as a sweater because they believed that intense sweating would lead to dramatic weight loss. So they would wear sweaters while they exercised. They didn't lose any body fat, but they did do a really great job at making themselves utterly dehydrated. Suspenders versus braces. But wait, this can get even more confusing because sometimes Brits and Americans use the same words to describe different things. For instance, you know these straps that help keep an old man's trousers up? Well, in the UK they're called braces and in the US they're called suspenders. In the UK, suspenders are the undergarments used to hold up stockings. In the US, these are referred to as garter belts. So if you're an American guy shopping in the UK, you might get some strange looks if you ask the shop assistant for some stylish suspenders. But you know what, whatever floats your boat, we're not here to kink shame you. Tank tops versus vests. Okay, here's another one. A tank top in the US is called a vest in the UK. What Americans would call a vest, we Brits would call a waistcoat. So, if you're an American in the UK looking to go to a wedding, don't ask for a vest to go with your tuxedo unless it is real casual. And now you can successfully dress yourself on either side of the Atlantic. If you'd like to learn more about British versus American dress, check out John Lankford's piece on bbcamerica.com. And let us know in the comments which British and American clothes terminologies you find confusing. And if you have any other questions about all things British, just tweet us at Anglophenia and maybe we'll cover it in a future video. Thanks for watching. You are gonna wanna click on that one. That one's fantastic. They're all so good, I don't know which ones to recommend.